Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're going to make an adjustable work light. After having these two tools for about nine or ten months and not really using them, we're finally ready to start doing some projects over here. Now that means that we actually need to add some light. And instead of sticking a light just on the ceiling, I want to make an adjustable light that we can actually move around on both sides of the bridge board and over here above the lathe. It's a little dark over here, so let's go to the whiteboard and I'll show you what we're thinking. The idea is to make a track that we can hang on the bottom of the joist, that way we could actually move it anywhere in the shop that we wanted to. And then from that track, there's going to be a little piece that will slide back and forth. From that piece, there's going to be an arm that will come down and have two joints on it. It's going to have a joint up here at the top, one in the elbow, and then actually I guess a third down here that's going to hold the light. That light's going to have a ball joint on it so it can go anywhere else, and all these other ones are going to just turn on a single axis. I do know that on YouTube over the last year or so there's been a bunch of little adjustable work lights or tripod mounts or camera arms. I've seen all of those and they're great. We're just going to try to do something a little bit different. To hang this thing from the ceiling we're going to use a piece of aluminum extrusion. This has slots down four sides and so we're just going to use two of those to put in some wheels and make the trolley be able to move back and forth. Now the next thing is actually the length of the different arm sections and for that we're going to use some aluminum tubing. This is a closet pole like you would hang in your closet, put your clothes on. So it's really thin, it's just rigid enough to work, and it's really lightweight. So we're going to cut this down into a couple of sections and then we can start working on the joints. Another big thing that we want to try to do with this light is actually make it controllable by one hand. So we want to have this whole arm where you can grab at the bottom and have a little lever that you can pull and that will loosen all of the joints. That way you can move it where you want it to be and when you let go of the lever, it should lock back into place. What's going to make that difficult is that there's multiple joints. You have the elbow joint, you have the one at the top for rotation, and then you have the one that's mounted to the plate. Now we've come up with a way around that to make sure that each one of these pieces can spin when it's free and then lock into place. We did that with Fusion 360 and 3D printing. Imagine this is the entire arm and there's a joint right here in the middle. We want to have a bike cable that runs up through that joint all the way up to the very top so that we can loosen and tighten that cable, locking all the joints into place. So if you think about this piece being sliced at an angle, that angle can then be the pivot point for this elbow joint. In Fusion 360 we made something that will effectively, I hope, do the same thing. These two pieces will go into the pipes and then mate together so that the cable can go through this hole and out in the bottom and when it's pulled tight these pieces will be pushed together. But when it's loosened they can separate and then they can rotate. So on one side we've got some bumps and on the other side we have some little divots that match up with those bumps. And that lets us put the two pieces together, they go flat, but then when we loosen the tension they can separate, rotate, and then lock into the next position. And so that allows us to rotate these pieces and get it to stick whenever we add some tension to it. Now unfortunately right now, because it's a raw print, it, there's a lot of friction. It's actually really hard to turn them, so we're going to add some paste wax on the inside of these so that the two pieces will move freely when they're not under tension. I want to show you how these are going to go together and will tension with the cable. Now I want to use a brake cable from a bike, but this is some twisted metal wire I have that will work just as an example. So it's going to go into this hole right here, come out of the center, and then it goes into the other one the same way. So it comes out of both ends. Now when there's pressure applied to both outside pieces, they're going to lock together and they'll stay in that position until you loosen the tension and then they can separate and move freely. Now the other end of this is going to go through the pipe to the next fitting and that's going to get us to where the handle is going to come in. The cable will come down through this arm and then poke out a hole and connect to a handle that you can squeeze. When you squeeze it, it'll let the tension off of the cable. When you let go of it, it will retension the cable. Anthony had the idea of using one of these hand strengtheners. This is going to be perfect. It's got a handle, it's got a pivot point, it's got a really high tension spring. And so we can cut off this side and mount it here so that when you squeeze it, the cable will get less tension, and when you let go, the tension will go back. So we got to make a mount so that we can put this piece inside the pipe.
This video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you are interested in learning something, you can probably find a course about it on Skillshare because they have thousands of courses that cover all different topics. I'm really interested in making the most of my time and I found a course by a guy I actually know named Thomas Frank and the course is called Real Productivity. He walks you through how to be really productive with your time and make the most of your effort in whatever you're interested in. But maybe productivity is not your thing. Maybe you wanna learn about music production or graphic design. There's courses for all of that and you should definitely check them out on Skillshare. In fact, if you're one of the first thousand people to go down in the description, hit the link, you're going to get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. This gives you access to everything on Skillshare. You can learn as much as you want during that trial. And after that, it's really inexpensive and definitely worth the cost. Be sure to hit that link down in the description and go check them out. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. That actually went together really quickly. Now I just have to shape this part so that it can go up into the pipe. Another cool thing about using this piece of exercise equipment is it actually has a tensioner on it, which moves the handle in and out of the spring so you can add a little bit of tension or release it as you need to. Wait, I need a rasp. That's what I need, what am I doing? So it's gonna be something like this, so that you can grab the bottom, squeeze the handle, and then that will pull the cable and all that stuff. Now down here, we're also gonna to have to have the mount for the light. The light that we found is actually gonna hook into a quarter 20 bolt, which is a, a really common light and camera fixture. So we're gonna mount a quarter 20 bolt sticking out of the bottom of this somehow, but before we do that, I wanna go back and sand this, round off all the corners and kind of shape it up a little bit, because really, this part's just about done. This is the light that we're gonna be using. It's really lightweight. You can run it off of batteries or plug it in, and it's very bright. Now this is going into the upper part of the Joby mount, which slides into the bottom part of that mount. Once you snap these two pieces together, you can loosen the knob, change this ball joint to where you want it, and then tighten it back up so it'll hold that position. Now this is all gonna be upside down, which means right here, we need to connect this to the bottom of our arm. When you wanna move it around, you'll grab it like this and squeeze it so the light needs to be attached down here. Now we're gonna need the cable to come off the handle and go up into this metal pipe and then up, but we don't want it scraping on that opening. So we've got some PTFE tubing. This is what your filament goes through on a 3D printer. It's really slick plastic. And I think we're gonna to try to actually drill the hole and then mount this inside of it so that the wire moves on the inside of the plastic rather than on the inside of the metal. As you might expect, the piece of wood that was holding the handle broke after some use. There was just a lot of spring tension pushing on this little piece right here and it snapped off, but it's not a big deal. This whole section was pretty easy to make and I think instead of rebuilding the entire thing out of a different material, we can actually just make an insert to put right here in this broken section. The hardest part is actually gonna be cutting this out so that we can fit in a piece of aluminum and then once we get that in there, we can drill a hole and make a new mount for the handle. So I got through that and then realized that I should probably use that. This is one of those tools that I just never really have used and so I don't think about it as part of the tool set. But I need to take advantage of this tool because it's the perfect way to make a slot like this. It's great when you use the right tool for the right job. <laughs> had an idea. This thing, I think, will work. We could probably make it work, but we may end up having the same problem of pieces of the wood breaking off with all of the tension eventually. So, what I think we can actually do is take this half-inch piece of aluminum and make this same thing, but only a half of an inch thick. So that means that the plug that goes up into the pipe is only gonna be a half of an inch thick, so we'll have to use some set screws to keep that from spinning in the tube. It also means that this hole for the spring is actually gonna be captive within the piece of aluminum, but the spring's gonna stick out on the sides a little bit. I don't think that'll be a problem. And we can make this entire mechanism one piece so it can't bend, it can't break with the tension of that spring. Now, this is actually gonna take me to the mill again to do something I have never done before, so you get to watch me learn.
That was a terrible bit of machining. Through the process, I realized that I didn't have the right bits because I've never really purchased them. I just have a bunch that came with the machine. So now I have a better idea of what I need to order. But regardless of all that, I was able to get it done. It works perfectly and actually looks pretty nice in my opinion. So now we need to put the cable in right here and then string all these pieces together so we can see if the whole cable mechanism actually works. This last one is actually gonna to attach to the trolley so it can slide on the track. It's gonna be able to spin and then it'll have the connection to the rest of the arm. So we modeled this one a little bit differently. The wire comes through here and goes straight out the hole in the back so we can terminate it. That'll keep it tight. We can use the tension to actually be able to move the thing. On the top side, instead of just having a through hole, I actually modeled in a quarter 20 thread so that I can put a screw right down into this to mount it up to the plate. Modeling that into a project like this was incredibly easy in Fusion 360. We have a whole online course about learning Fusion. If you're interested, there'll be a link down below. I'm just gonna temporarily lock this onto something so that we can tighten it down. I'll have to figure out a permanent solution later on. We got this thing mounted and put to the ceiling temporarily and I want to test it out and make sure that the whole mechanism works. We did play with it a little bit and it does hold in place. The joints need to be kind of rested into their slots. So there is something that we could adjust as far as the tension and I think one of the other things is that these two pieces can separate like this. They often kind of pivot on the center point. So we need to put a little collar around one side of them so that the other one will sit inside that collar and not want to do this as much. So I've got a version of one of these pieces on the printer and while we're waiting on that, let's go ahead and work on the trolley and the track across the top. The track for this is actually just a piece of aluminum with some holes drilled in it. And then I've got a bolt running through some spacers that I made on the laser. They're just kind of like thick washers and those go to the wheel. These wheels have a little bevel on them which makes them fit into the slot on the side of the extrusion so these things are captive once this is put on. You've got enough gap here underneath it to put the head of the bolt so it can come down and then the arm can mount down here. And this will allow it to slide back and forth. I'm not adding a brake to this or anything to stop it from sliding on the track because we're in charge of where this light's going. And so once we get it into position, nothing else should move it. So before I put the other two wheels on, we're gonna go ahead and drill the hole in the center, put in the quarter 20 bolt coming out so that we can mount the arm when it's done. We got the trolley all up on the ceiling, it's ready to go, and while we're waiting for that other piece to come off the printer, I got the power situation figured out. This is gonna plug in here, and then we have a really lightweight wire that's gonna run up, and then the actual wall wart, the heavy part, is gonna be mounted, fixed on the ceiling up there. It turns out this thing is actually really bright, so it's gonna work out really well. While we're waiting on that, and this is done, I'm gonna go ahead and take this entire thing apart, paint the pipe, and get it all ready to put back up there. We finally got that new piece off the printer and basically all I did was add a little lip around the outside so that when these pieces fit together, the one on my left actually goes inside this one. That does make it tighter to fit together which makes it a little bit harder to turn but I think is gonna make it more stable. So we're gonna put this whole thing together and see how this works and since all the pieces are here, we're actually ready to finish this up. All I did here was drill a little hole through the end of this bolt so that I could put on a nut and squeeze down on the wire.
overall, this thing does work like we wanted it to, although I've already found several things that I think we can do better. The geometry of how the pieces are attached to the arms themselves need to be adjusted, and I think we can find some ways to add more tension to the whole system so that it will lock in place a little bit more. Plus, the trolley needs some work. The part where it's connected and it spins around, I think, is kind of weak, and that needs to be a little bit more robust. Anyway, we've got a whole bunch of things that we can do, but this is a great first step. If this gave you an idea of how to make something to make your workspace better, I'd love to hear about it. Let me know down in the comments. We've got tons of other types of projects that you may want to check out, and if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that as well. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. You can actually loosen the side, the, what is this thing called? The knob. Knob, <laughs> knob, that's right. Yeah, no, it'd be nice if there were light over here. So that was a pretty terrible bit of machining, but I did get the thing done, but in the process, but I said but, but twice, but, but. Today we're gonna make an adjustable. <laughs> That's all right. I missed the thing. We're gonna make.